This program is brought to you by the Genesis Communications Network, a world leader in talk radio since 1998. Visit GCNlive.com today. Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last... 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your calls on the bright side at 844-236-6010. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. And, of course, if you have questions about the longevity products or formulations or ingredients or our true skin health products, if you have a success story you'd like to share, if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the Bright Side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, you can head over to criticalhealthnews.com, brightsideben.com, or pharmacistben.com and order products right off the website. Or you can call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866 7 2470. That's 866 735 2470. You can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the phone for a one time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business, make some money selling longevity products, and at the same time help change the world with nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Change the health of loved ones, friends, family members, strangers by recommending and suggesting and utilizing the Longevity products. Call 866-735-2470. They can tell you all about it. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, including our Truth 5% Retinol 5% Gel, if you're dealing with accelerated aging or skin tags or acne or large pores or thinning skin or you want to prevent all of those things from occurring, you want to be using retinol on a regular basis, not a daily basis, but a regular basis, maybe uh, once a week, twice a week, once every 10 days, depending on your skin type, retinol 5%. You're not going to find 5% retinol anywhere, but on truthtreatments.com. It is completely unavailable. Not only that, but you're not going to find any retinol products with 25% vitamin C, a um, humongous dose of premium fat-soluble vitamin C, and, of course, never any preservatives, fragrances, perfumes, silicon oil, water, wax, emulsifiers, surfactants, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of my Truth Skin Health products. Check them out at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so I know we're talking about connective tissue a lot for good reason. There is no such thing as a chronic degenerative disease without connective tissue involvement. A lot of what we assume to be joint pain, muscle pain, nerve pain, discomfort is related to connective tissue, specifically fascia, which is what we talked about yesterday, the rubber bands that give our body a dynamic nature that wrap all of our organs and structures in a in an envelope of protection common ailments like frozen shoulders and sore muscles and tennis elbow and carpal tunnel syndrome these are all connective tissue fascia issues i would say that almost all of what we call chronic pain 
and that includes neuralgias and neuropathies and, and uh, fibromyalgia. I would say pretty much all of it has something to do with the connective tissue, specifically adhesion, stickiness, and scars, and twists, and dehydration, and shrinking of the connective tissue and the fascia, and that makes that stuff important. Chronic pain, that also means that chronic pain issues can be handled by ourselves. We don't need doctors, folks. At best, you maybe need a chiropractor or somebody who can manipulate the fascia. Body work. Now, body work is different from doctoring. Body work is important. Absolutely important. Doctoring is not important. Unless you have an emergency, doctoring is irrelevant. Doctoring, doctoring is useless. As anybody who has a chronic degenerative disease can tell you, they don't get better by going to the doctor. Nobody gets better by going to a doctor. This is a, a cultural trance that we are under. This is a spell that we're under. We think we need to go to the doctor when we have a, a, a chronic degenerative health challenge or an autoimmune disease or heart disease or high blood pressure or diabetes. We think we need a doctor. Folks, we don't need doctors. They're irrelevant except for taking your money. It's just, it's a scam. Now, body work is different. Chiropractors, role thing, body workers of all kinds. These people are very important. Manipulation of the body. Now, that is some serious health, uh, those are some serious, serious health protocols. When we work on our connective tissue through body work, or even if we do it ourselves through stretching, everything benefits. The connective tissue everywhere benefits. The body in general benefits because the connective tissue connects everything, as the name implies. So if we start using NAG, uh, N-acetylglucosamine, or glucosamine, and vitamin C, and our glucogel caps, and our bone broth protein, and our bone soup, and we do all this for our joints, say, well, guess what? Our gums will get stronger because our gums are connective tissue. Our brain will get stronger because our brain is dependent excuse me, on connective tissue. Movement disorders will improve. Blood vessels will improve. When we take care of our connective tissue for arthritis, our blood vessels will improve. Our, our, the health of our blood vessels will improve. The health of our heart will improve. And nowhere, nowhere is connective tissue building strategies more important, at least from a superficial perspective, than the skin. Skin health challenges are connective tissue based. The vast majority of them. There are some contact issues, perhaps like uh, surface allergens, nickel allergies, maybe, or gluten allergies, topical gluten allergies, concrete dermatitis. There are some things that can happen topically, but the, for the most part, our skin health issues are based in the connective tissue. Certainly, accelerated aging is based in the connective tissue. Yesterday, I talked about eczema. Do you know eczema is a connective tissue problem? Now, you wouldn't think that. You look at eczema, you look at your hands, and, and you, know, you see the, the eczematic rashes, and you say, well, how can that be the connective tissue? That looks like it's the surface of the skin. No, it's because of defects in the connective tissue. Defects in the connective tissue that are based in digestive toxicity. Defects in the connective tissue that are based in nutritional deficiencies. Defects in the connective tissue underneath the surface of the skin create a situation where the, the top cells, the, the top where we can see, the surface where we can see becomes dysfunctional. But it starts off in the connective tissue. When you take a steroid cream or you apply a steroid cream to your eczema, what part of your body do you think you're affecting with the steroid cream? The connective tissue. The connective tissue, the immune cells are in the connective tissue. So you take a, you apply a steroid cream, you're suppressing the immune cells in the connective tissue. The real question to ask is why is my, why are my immune cells active? And you'll find, for the most part, it has to do with foods. I'm not Mr. You know, good health. Good. I'm not Mr. Diet guy. You know, I eat crappy. I admit it. If you put an apple pie in front of me and I'm hungry, I'm going to eat that apple pie. This is not about good diet, bad diet. This is about taking control of our health. This is not about good food, bad food. This is about freeing us from the medical tyranny. This is not about guilt. This is not about I'm a good person or bad person because I eat apple pies or french fries or I eat only organic. This is about freeing us from doctors. This is about freeing us from drugs. This is about freeing us from a medical model that is useless. Useless with a capital U. This is about taking care of our own health business. The connection between, the relationship between food and health is largely based in the connective tissue because the wrong foods affect the connective tissue. 
Food particles that leak in or that enter into the blood through a leaky gut deposit in the connective tissue. This is where connective tissue deterioration begins, and this is where immune responses begin as well. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll continue when we come back from our break. You're listening to The Bright Side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We will return right after this. back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time. This is your Common Sense Nutritional Program where we get into how the body works. I don't like just giving you recipes and supplement protocols. There's lots of health programs that say take this, take that, and I understand, you know, sometimes people will just want to cut to the chase and take this, take that, but you guys, if you're listening to this program, you're smart enough to want to know how the whole thing works. It's not just about take this or take that. I want to teach you how this whole thing works, how the body works, how health works, how cells work. So you can take care of your own health business without having somebody instruct you on what pills to take, on what supplements to take, on what strategies to use. I want you guys to come up with your own strategies. And once we understand how the body is put together, we can come up with our own strategies. You're smart enough to do it. I'm not the, uh, this is not about me being uh, Mr. Smart Guy here. I just read a lot, that's all. And I'm sharing with you every day what I learn so that you can take care of your own health business without doctors, without drugs, without any outside authorities. We shouldn't need to have somebody outside of us telling us what our body's about. We shouldn't have to have somebody outside of us telling us what's, uh, how to correct or how to fix our bodies. It's not that complicated. The body is really quite simple, and it's on automatic for the most part. It doesn't need a lot of work. The body doesn't make mistakes. The body has millions, maybe even billions, of years of refining and fine-tuning. We are the end product of millions and perhaps billions of years of fine-tuning and refining, and the body is perfect. It doesn't make mistakes. If there's something going on, like cholesterol deposits or fibrosis or deterioration or degeneration or inflammation, that means the body's trying to fix something. If something's happening in the body, it represents the body's attempt to fix it. It represents the body's attempt to survive. What we call disease is not a mistake. It doesn't need to be suppressed. It needs to be understood. What we call disease is the body's attempt to repair or protect. Inflammation is protection. Fibrosis is protection. Deposits are protection. The body is attempting to protect itself from us and from the doctor, for that matter. Our job is to figure out what is happening. Our job is not to suppress inflammation. I was doing a phone call with my friend Melissa Galladay yesterday on her, on her weekly conference calls, which, which I highly suggest that you guys participate in or listen in on. She's a nutritional pharmacist like I am. And I was doing a call, and she wanted to know about the... Uh, somebody asked about foods for anti-inflammation. And I said, you don't want to suppress inflammation. Inflammation's your friend. You want to figure it out not suppress it. Our job is to figure out what's happening in the body. If you go to a doctor, his job is to fig help you figure out what's going in the body, uh, going on in your body to teach you. Doctor means teacher, to teach you what's going on in your body. There's only two things that ever go wrong in the body. There's only two things that the body, I should say, has to repair or has to fix. And that is deficiency and that is toxicity. Those are the only two things that we got to address, deficiency and toxicity, deficiencies of oxygen and deficiencies of nutrients. And that's it, folks. Maybe if you want to include water in there, too, as a nutrient. Deficiencies in nutrition and water and oxygen and toxicity. That's it. And that's really not that difficult. If you're dealing with a chronic degenerative disease, the first thing you got to do is you got to believe that reversal is possible. You got to believe in the perfection of the body. You got to believe in the divine force that underlies the growth and development and repair of every single cell and tissue and structure in the body. You've got to believe. That's the first thing. That's philosophical. If you're sick, believe you can get better. If that's too airy fairy, I'm sorry. That has to precede healing, the belief that it can be done. And that's true about cancer and heart disease. It's true about acne. 
and eczema. It's true about serious life-threatening uh, chronic degenerative illnesses, and it's true about mild superficial cosmetic ones. You've got to believe that reversal is possible. And then you've got to be willing to do what it takes. You've got to be willing to supplement. You've got to be willing to identify problem foods. You've got to be willing to repair the gut. You've got to be willing to move the body, to exercise the body. You've got to be willing to rest. I think that's really ironic how some of us are not willing to rest. We're not willing to relax. It is not a good thing to be working all the time, to be thinking all the time, to be moving all the time. And I hear people say this all the time. Well, I can't rest. I got too much to do. I just can't seem to stop thinking. That's not good. We got to be willing to stop thinking. We got to be willing to shut things off. We got to be willing to take a hot bath twice a day. So you got to believe that reversal is possible. Then you got to be willing to do what it takes. And then you got to experiment. And that means trying different supplements, trying uh, eliminating different foods, trying different exercise protocols. You got to be uh, willing to experiment with different physical protocols. And of course, that means getting on a good nutritional supplement program like the one formulated and designed by Dr. Wallach. And that's why I am so proud to represent the Longevity products. Call 866-735-2470 if you want to join me in my mission to help educate the world about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. All right, we've got lines open at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls in our next segment. So I wanna, I'm going to spend some time talking about connective tissue in the skin. As many of you know, I've been in the skin business formulating skincare products since 1983. I can't even believe that myself. But that's a lot of formulating skincare products, and that's a lot of studying the skin. And I would venture to say that I know a thing or two about skincare products and about skin health. And I'm telling you, if you want to have beautiful, healthy skin, you got to work on the connective tissue. Wrinkles, fine lines, crow's feet, crepey skin, dry skin, eczema, psoriasis, keloid, scars, you name it, sun damage. These are all issues with the connective tissue. So we got to understand how to turn on the production of healthy connective tissue if we want to have healthy, beautiful skin. Now, if you take glucosamine supplements for your arthritis, that's going to help your skin. In fact, there are some clever skin formulations that will actually put glucosamine in the products topically. Now, I'm not sure that you're going to get benefits from topical glucosamine, but nonetheless, it at least points to some formulators understanding that connective tissue is, is a key player in the health and the beauty of the skin. So uh, using glucosamine, N-acetylglucosamine, which is a souped up version of glucosamine, high uronic acid. I know some of you guys have heard of high uronic acid. These are all strategies for building connective tissue. Whether you can use them topically, put them on top of your skin and get connective tissue benefits, I'm not, I, I don't think that's the case. But certainly taking high uronic acid capsules, 100 milligrams a day is a great idea for anti-wrinkling. Taking glucosamine supplements, Taking any arthritis supplements can help you build connective tissue in the skin, and that means younger looking skin. That also means improvements in eczematic skin or psoriasis skin as well, using connective tissue building strategies. And by the way, there is no more connective tissue building supplement that is more important than vitamin C. In fact, you cannot make connective tissue without vitamin C, and it's very likely that most people are vitamin C deficient. Under conditions of vitamin C deficiency, not enough to cause scurvy perhaps, but mild deficiency or just not getting enough vitamin C, your body will pull vitamin C away from the skin and redirect it to the heart and redirect it to the circulation and redirect it to the liver and redirect it to the adrenal glands and redirect it to the bones and redirect it to areas that it considers more important than the skin. And that's why topical vitamin C is so important because you can bypass this redirecting phenomena by applying vitamin C topically. Yeah, your body will pull the vitamin C away from the skin to more important structures inside the body, but by putting vitamin C on top of your skin, you can take advantage of the healing and uh, connective tissue growing power of this vitamin right on top of the skin. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number.
back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Benny for 4236-6010 is our number. And we've got uh, empty board, full board of open lines for you at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, the longevity products, formulations, ingredients, something you may have heard about or read about, or if you just have a success story you'd like to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, we love hearing from you. I love hearing from you. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lots of stories here I want to uh, I want to cover. So if we don't have any calls, got lots to talk about. Uh, tomorrow we'll continue talking about connective tissue in the skin. I love this idea of how we can bypass some of the negative effects of this rerouting or redirecting of nutrition from the skin to the more vital organs inside the body. Most people unless you're supplementing or unless you're listening to this program or you know you're involved in health and you understand health and you like working with health and the health of the body most people are going to be deficient in vitamin C most people are going to be deficient in vitamin A and vitamin C and vitamin A are two incredibly incredibly important vitamins for the skin so under conditions of vitamin A deficiency under conditions of vitamin C deficiency your body is going to redirect these two important nutrients to it's away from the skin and away from the scalp and away from the nails and away from the extremities and to the center of your body. And that means your skin is going to start to look crappy. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because it means your heart is now going to get the nutrients and the internal organs are going to get the nutrients. But if you don't want your skin to look crappy under these conditions, use topical vitamins, especially topical vitamin C and topical vitamin A. Use my truth treatment products, which are high concentrations of both vitamin C and vitamin A. We'll continue talking about the importance of driving the production of collagen and driving the production of connective tissue to keep your wrinkles away, to keep fine lines away, to look better, using topical as well as internal strategies that help build connective tissue tomorrow and in the coming days on the bright side. We'll also continue. I also want to talk more about the heart and the connective tissue. This is a very, very underappreciated subject, and considering that heart disease is a leading cause of death, the leading cause of death and misery in this country, I think the relationship between building connective tissue and keeping your heart healthy is extremely important and something nobody's talking about. And we'll also talk about the relationship of building connective tissue to the digestive system. Yes. Guess what? Your digestive system, your intestines specifically, is uh, strengthened and kept resilient and strong via connective tissue. And when the connective tissue breaks down in the body and breaks down in the intestine, this is where much disease begins via something called leaky gut syndrome. Leaky gut syndrome is a connective tissue problem. Okay, 844-236-6010. Now we got some calls here, and uh, we'll get to you in just a moment, so hang on. I want to just tell you about a couple of cool stories that I read. I've got a bunch here, actually. Let me see what, see some good ones here. Feeling blue? Take a break from Facebook. I love this one. A new study shows that regular use of Facebook, actually of all social networking, can negatively affect your emotional well-being and satisfaction with life. This is according to an article, a study that was published in Cyber Psychology, Behavior, and Social Networking. That is actually the name of a journal, Cyber Psychology, Behavior, and Social Networking. How 21st century is that? Cyber Psychology, Behavior, and Social Networking. This was published yesterday, and they find that if you uh, quit Facebook for a little bit, or actually take a break from Facebook, they say you don't have to quit it altogether, but just taking a break from, from Facebook, you may actually feel better. The study found that uh, lurking, as they put it, on Facebook can cause negative emotions. However, on the bright side, as they say, actively connecting with close friends on Facebook can increase one's sense of well-being. So you don't have to completely eliminate social networking, but you got to take put it in perspective. And by the way, this is also true about the news. We talked to, uh, I forgot who we talked to a couple days ago. He said he, he stopped watching the news. He felt better. And I can relate because I stopped watching the news a couple months ago and I feel better. And I've been a news junkie for 30 or 40 years. If something makes you feel crappy after you listen to it, turn it off. If something makes you feel scared after you listen to it, turn it off. If something makes you feel fearful after you listen to it, turn it off. It's not helping you. You don't need to know. You don't need to know all the ins and outs of what's going on politically. You don't need to know all the ins and outs of the, the, the trucks that are driving into, into bystanders at, at Christmas celebrations. What is going on with those people anyway, driving trucks into crowds? The, the craziness in the world doesn't help us from a health perspective, and there's no need to know. It's titillating, maybe. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of 
interesting in a perverted sort of sense, but it doesn't do us any good from a health perspective. So from cyber psychology, behavior, and social networking, take it from them. Take a break from Facebook. It may help you, uh, it may help you with your health. From uh, scientific reports published yesterday, sunlight offers surprising benefits. It energizes infection-fighting T cells. It improves your immune system. Getting a little bit of sun every day not only helps you make vitamin D, but it also supports the immune system. This is extremely important, especially if you're dealing, by the way, with autoimmune diseases. Getting out in the sun, and especially if you're dealing with skin diseases. Folks who have psoriasis know good and well that a little bit of sunlight improves their psoriasis. If you have a wound or you're healing from some kind of trauma, skin trauma, getting it out in the, getting the skin exposed to some sunlight accelerates the healing of wounds. According to this article, sunlight helps you make something called hydrogen peroxide, the same hydro hydrogen peroxide that you get from drugstores, which improves the cell's ability to fight disease importance of sunlight. Of course, you also get the vitamin D benefits, and we all feel better when we get a, a little bit of sun. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let us go to Ontario and welcome Robert to the bright side. Good morning, Robert. Um, do you need a doctor for a hernia, or is there some... some uh, what, what, is it, what do you think a doctor is going to do for a hernia? Well, Hypothetically. Strap you up. <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to do nothing for your hernia. What kind of hernia you got? The lower one on the right They may side. immobilize you. They may be, maybe will immobilize you, but there's nothing they could do to get it better. You know, you can just immobilize it yourself. But, but here's the deal. What is a hernia exactly? I'm not picking on you, Robert. I'm absolutely not picking tissue. on you. The, hey, how'd you know that? Where'd you hear that from? from it's a con <laughs> that's exactly right. It's a connective tissue, a sign of connective tissue deterioration. The connective tissue is breaking down. So what you got to do is you got to do all your strategies for building connective tissue. There's not a drug on planet Earth that can help you. There's not a surgical procedure that can help you, except if you're in misery, they may need to re do some surgical repair. But they're not going to be able to help r drive the production of the connective tissue. Get yourself some gelatin capsules. Get yourself on the glucosamine. Start doing your bone broth protein. Make sure you're doing lots of vitamin C. Once the hernia starts to heal up, you want to do exercise. We haven't really addressed this, but we will be. Exercising the body, moving the body, drives the production of connective tissue. The body functions under a use it or lose it mandate. So if we don't use it, we lose it. And one of the reasons why our connective tissue deteriorates as we get older is because we're not moving our body. The connective tissue, as we said many times, is piezoelectric, which means that it generates an electrical charge through movement and pressure. So as you're, as you're moving and, and applying pressure to the connective tissue through movement, you're driving its production. This is why massage is so helpful. So I'm not sure where your hernia is, but you may want to consider body work in addition to the supplements. Sugar is the mortal enemy of the connective tissue. So going low sugar, pretending you're a diabetic, you, you very well may be a diabetic, but at least treating yourself as you're a diabetic, as if you were a diabetic, is another important strategy for helping heal the connective tissue. And keep in mind, Robert, if you've got a hernia and your connective tissue is deteriorating in the groin, say, or wherever you have your hernia, that means it's deteriorating in other places too, and you're running higher risks for all kinds of health challenges. So hernia is a, a harbinger of ugly things to come. So not only do you want to help do all the things to repair your hernia, but you want to do all of these strategies strategies to prevent further problems. Hang on, Robert. we got to take a break. We'll finish up when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. All right, we're back on The Bright Side, and now we've got lots of calls here. Why do you guys wait till the last minute? I want to try to get everybody in, and so we're going to go real fast. Uh, finish up with Robert real quick. Robert, are you there, sir? Robert in yeah. Ontario. Is this Ontario, Canada, or Ontario, California? Yeah, near Toronto. Way? Oh, nice. Awesome. Hope I see you I at the... Uh, sometime. I hope to see you next April. I'll be there with my friend, Goddess Jill. Is there any bad vitamin C? Any bad vitamin C? There's you mean, all the same. It's all the same. I mean, there's some souped up versions of vitamin C for sure, but ascorbic acid orally is, is as good as any. Um, but uh, topically, you want to use fat soluble vitamin C. So make sure you're using your Beyond Tangy Tangerine, your glucogel caps, gelatin. Uh, staying away from sugar because sugar is the mortal enemy, as I was saying, of connective tissue. And, and by staying away, I, I don't necessarily mean zero tolerance, but as close to zero tolerance as you can get. Uh, and also food toxicity. 
density can help, uh, can cause the degradation of connective tissue as well. Uh, make sure you're exercising, moving your body. Bone soup as well as bone broth protein can also help you if you want to do uh, some of the amino acids supplementally. Get something called uh, uh, proline. That's one of the amino acids that's involved in connective tissue uh, building. And also something called glycine, G-L-Y-C-I-N-E. Glycine is important not just for connective tissue, but also for detoxification. And uh, glycine deficiencies are somewhat common, which is interesting because glycine is found in a lot of foods. Uh, it's the simplest of the amino acids, and it's extremely important for building connective tissue. So you may want to just supplement with a little bit of extra glycine. I put extra glycine in my smoothie uh, along with uh, glutamine and along with my bone broth protein. So those, those are some ideas for you. And then, of course, organ meats, eggs, high-protein foods, that will also help you build up the connective tissue. Well, Got to move, Silica Robert. Gel. Any, anything Silica else? Gel, is that good? Silica is awesome, and I'm going to be spending some time talking about silica here in the coming days. Silica is one of the great underappreciated nutritional supplements. It is a major element in connective tissue building. Thank you for pointing that out. Look for liquid silica gel. That's, That's the best really way have. to get... You have that? The ab kit, A-B-K-I-T? Good. Liquid. It's a little pricey, but it's an awesome supplement for helping build connective tissue. Uh, and also, it's, um, it's a, uh, a nice all-around supplement just to, just to make sure you're getting enough silica. A lot of folks don't get enough silica. Silica is found in vegetables. And if you're not eating a lot of veggies, you may be deficient in this super important mineral and underappreciated mineral. All right. Thanks, Robert, for your call. Appreciate it. God bless you, and happy holidays, bro. All right. Let's go to Melody in California. What's going on, Melody? Good morning. Good morning, Ben. Hey, a quick question. In the past, you've talked about using digestive enzymes to reduce inflammation. Um, yes. Doing it like on an empty stomach. How does that work exactly? And That's a great how question. How many you take in the Well, there's no real answer to how many. You, the, there's no answer to how many you take, but the inflammatory process is is caused by proteins that, ca uh, that uh, stimulate the secretion of fibers. When you have inflammation associated with that is fibrosis. And so uh, what the digestive enzymes do, particularly what are called protein digestive enzymes or proteolytic digestive enzymes or proteases, they help dissolve the fibers and that thereby improve inflammation or improve the uh, uh, improve the uh, slow down the inflammatory process i should say so by anti uh, the the proteases the proteolytic enzymes have antifibrotic properties and by antifibrosis they improve inflammation they also help thin the blood by, via the same mechanism so enzymes can also have a blood thinning effect and take, you have to take them on an empty stomach uh, the answer to how much digestive enzymes there's no real answer to that there's no way to know i would take two or three on an empty stomach if you were concerned about inflammation and the associated pain can be relieved as well. You can take more. There's no real toxicity, so you can take as many as you want. But start off with two or three on an empty stomach and see what happens. Okay. Does that help? We'll do it. Thank you so okay. much. Yeah. Okay. Good Thanks. deal. Good Merry to talk Christmas. to you. Merry Christmas okay. to you, Melody. Thank you. Okay. Carol in Washington. Good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side, Carol. What's up? Oh, good morning. I have a friend. He's in in his 70s, early 70s. He's been to eight or nine doctors. He's had a CAT scan. He's been to dentists. He's had x-rays. He has a pain behind his left ear, and he's been a chiropractor, ear, nose, and throat specialist. Uh, nobody can, nobody can find him. First they said inflammation. Then they said there wasn't inflammation. Now he's got an appointment with a doctor to see about a splint in his jaw. Well, listen, he doesn't have, he, he, you can't have pain without inflammation, all right? So that's, we'll just, anybody who says there's no inflammation there doesn't know what they're talking about if he's in pain, and I assume he knows what he's talking about if he's in pain. So the yeah. first thing you want, you want to do is, you, at the age of 70, the degeneration that can occur in, a, in a, a patient or in a person who hasn't been paying attention to his health, it could be, there could be a million things that are causing the deterioration and the, the degeneration. So you got to start off where you can start off, and that's always going to be with food, all right? That's the first first thing you do is work with food. So if he has digestive uh, symptomology associate, uh, that he notices, associate it with food. You understand what I'm saying? If he has well, constipation. He every time he eats, it hurts. So, so he has to well, that's that perfect. Like that's perfect. Fast for a couple of days. He's probably not identifying the foods that are causing the problem because right. it's all a mishmash, and he's eating a whole bunch of different foods, so he doesn't know what's causing what. This is a general strategy for anybody who's dealing with a mysterious health challenge. Stop eating. Okay. Typically, if he, especially for him, because he says that when he eats anything, he gets worse. He's going to feel better when he stops eating. Now, obviously, he has to eat again. He has to. He can't never eat again, so he has to eat. But when he starts eating again, he wants to be very careful with what he eats. Pick one food, 
one type of food, not just one food, but one type of food. So instead of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, just peanuts. Instead of a, a, a Caesar salad, just lettuce. You, you know, understand what I'm saying? Instead of an egg salad sandwich, just egg. So just pick one type of food, eat it all day and see what happens. He's going to have to keep doing this. And what he's going to find is certain foods make his, make his inflammation worse. And then those are going to be foods or make his pain worse. And those are going to be foods that he needs to eliminate. The next step is going to be to patch up the gut. Use probiotics, good bacteria, digestive enzymes, apple cider vinegar with his meals, um, uh, the Fucoid Z, aloe vera. There's all the wonderful strategies for helping support digestive health. Now, this is kind of counterintuitive. He's going to be like, well, wait a minute. My pain is in my head. It's not in my digestive system. So you have to explain this relationship. The third element is going to be fats and fatty vitamins, specifically essential fatty acids, which are the molecules of inflammation. And, and keep in mind here, Carol, pain is a synonym with, for inflammation. You can't have pain without inflammation. So by using the essential fatty acids, the ultimate EFAs, if you're going to go longevity, you're going to have anti-inflammatory benefits. Also, the CMO uh, capsules, which are a, like a, a souped-up version of essential fatty acids, that is wonderfully anti-inflammatory. So I'd be using the CMO as well as the ultimate EFAs. Then there's some nice relaxing uh, uh, nutrients, nutrients that help the muscles relax, particularly magnesium is super relaxing. I would be using high doses of magnesium. Uh, niacin may be, able, may be helpful as well. Get them on the ultimate niacin. Of course, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, that goes without saying. And then if you can have him, uh, I don't know if you said if he actually had body work done, but a roll thing or some kind of uh, body work that's done on the upper uh, on the upper part of his body or upper part of his jaw, actually, uh, we hold a lot of tension in, the, in what's called the masseter muscle. And that's, a, that's probably the strong, I think it is the strongest muscle in the body is right where the jaw is. And tension in that area can cause deterioration of the connective tissue in that area and inflammation in that area. And that can also be associated with pain. So body work or f body work on the facial area or the jaw area might be helpful. And he can do some of that himself, learning to relax the jaw, learning to relax the facial muscles. We carry a lot of tension in the facial muscles. You know, I mean, think about it. If you just pay, if you just start paying attention to your face, you'll notice that there's, there's probably some tension for most of us. We carry it in our face, in the front part of our face, in our eyes and in the jaw area and learning to relax that area and breathe into that area. That can also be very helpful if you're dealing with TM or you're dealing with uh, some kind of mysterious throbbing pain in that area. So that's, uh, those are all some good strategies for you, but that's really the digestive element is a key component. As long as you've got toxicity entering into the blood through a broken down digestive system, it's, it, inflammatory pain issues are going to be likely, and they will be mysterious because it's very difficult for most people to connect things like the jaw or the face to the digestive system. Does that make sense, Carol? Yep, that's good. Thank you. Good deal. Take care. Have a beautiful day. All right, Karen, you get the last word. What's going on? K Karen in Texas. Oh, hey. Karen, Karen. Hey, hey, Karen. Hey, what's Hi. going on? How, how can we help you? Well, thank you. Uh, my, uh, my father has had trembling hands for decades now, but he's, he's now 82, and they're, it's getting so bad that it's hard for him to hold a glass of water, you know, to take a drink that's, or to write. That's a bummer. Get him on the B vitamins really quickly. That can make a huge difference. Uh, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and the Ultimate Niacin, uh, get today. I mean, don't wait, even wait a day. There's so many things you could do, but at the age of 83, you need some quick relief. Also, slow, deep breathing. Have him do slow, deep breathing. Uh, that can help stabilize the, the, um, the, the small muscles in the hands and the extremities if he's dealing with trembling. Slow, deep breathing. Anything you can do to relax the body, hot showers, hot baths, in addition to the slow, deep breathing can help. I'd also be using uh, the ultimate essential fatty acids. He may have some inflammation going on. It sounds like it could be a brain issue, uh, early Parkinson's or Parkinson's disease for that matter, which is a degenerative condition of the brain. I wish I had more time here, um, okay. but those are some good strategies. Those are some good places for you to start. Don't forget the basics. Vitamin E, very important for brain health. Vitamin C as well. Get them on a good nutritional supplement program in general. I wish I had more time, Karen. Call back tomorrow Thank and we can, we can get you some more information. Thanks for your call. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Friends, have a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.